This is pretty much going to be the Julia Childs of makeup tutorials. Nothing like being an experienced chef in these matters. Look at that. A meal fit for a king. Okay, you guys. <laughs> So here we are. I have no idea why, but many of you have asked for this video, so here I am to film it. You guys know I'm not one for long-winded intros. I like to get straight to the point, but before we get started, I do think there are two things I do need to go ahead and say. The first one being I did have this video in my calendar to record today, and then I used a new night cream last night that I had a severe, I would call it a severe allergic reaction to. I woke up with hives all over my face. So if you see any like leftover redness from that from this morning, I do apologize. I don't know what happened. But the second thing is, I am not a makeup artist. This is just simply how I do my makeup. I do not have some kind of professional setup. So this is kind of how it's gonna be. I'll probably use like the mirror on this and also my viewfinder. This is gonna be just my real life makeup. Without further ado, let's dive in. So the first thing that I do like to do is go ahead and moisturize. So for today, I am going to be using the Bliss don't know if y'all can see that. This is Bliss Drench and Quench Cream to Water Hydration for All Day Moisturizer. So I do just like to go ahead and get a little bit of this and put it on my face. Not too much though, but just like about that much. So just kind of dab. And the reason is, is like, I'm going to be flying later tonight. I have an ODAM. So flying dries your skin out like crazy so I do try and moisturize as much as possible just so it doesn't become like super patchy when you're all said and done so after I'm done moisturizing I kind of give this time to dry down and then I go in with a primer but I actually just ran out of primer so I will not be priming my face today it's just perfect look at that so we're gonna go ahead and skip that step which Sometimes I do. So the next thing that we're gonna go ahead and do is our foundation. Now y'all might think this is a little weird and that's okay because I'm not a makeup artist. So basically like the foundation I usually use is Dermacol and this is shade 208, which by the way, if you are going to use this, this is not for the faint of heart. This is pretty much as full coverage as you can possibly get. So use sparingly, go in with like a pea size and then build from there. But not only do I use this, sometimes I will add a little bit of this into it. And how much of this I add into really depends on how much self tanner I seem to have on. If I don't have on very much, it's just a really light amount. If I have on quite a bit, I'll add a little bit more. But this is the Leg and Body Makeup. It's a buildable liquid body foundation with sunscreen SPF 20 five in it. Now, why this is weird is because this is not specifically for your face, but I do actually really, really like to mix this in with this because this has like a more oily formula to it. It brings out some dewiness in the skin to make you look more hydrated. When flying, that's important. So that's where we're gonna start. <laughs> so I really just like to take, I'm not kidding, a pea size amount and that is it. And then just a little bit of this. Not much of that either. And I'm just going to mix those together with my beauty blender and apply them to my face. Just make sure it's all nicely mixed together because you don't want it to be like really light in one area and super dark in another. And when I do this, I really like to press it into the skin because I have pores. I don't know, I guess there's some people who don't. It's not me. So I have, I guess, medium to large pores. My pores are huge. Anyhow, we're just gonna go ahead and press this in. And really try and get like the nose area, because for me that's sometimes where you can see some of the crackage in there. Especially around there, the smile lines and the forehead, that's where I'll get breakage. I don't know about any of y'all. It was so funny. This is really full coverage, so sometimes it'll get into my hairline. And my mom messaged me a few days ago I actually take a little bit on the eyelid. But anyways, my mom messaged me um, a few days ago asking me if I was getting gray hair. I was like, 
no mom, I'm 25, I'm not getting gray hair. I think I have my foundation in my hairline, which I do catch sometimes when I'm editing videos, I'll notice it's there. Or it's dry shampoo that I didn't shake out all the way. That can also look like gray hair, but. No, nope, no gray hairs yet. So once you're kind of happy like with where your skin is out, I usually go in with concealer at this point. And the concealer that I'm really liking right now is by Rimmel London Stay Matte. I got sent this in PR through Influencer, so I really appreciate that. And I would have probably never used this if it wasn't for them, but it's become like a staple item of mine. The one thing I will say about this though is it does dry down quickly. So for me, I get a lot of creasing underneath the eyes. So usually I'll do both of my eyes first, set it, and then do the rest of my face with concealer. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and hit my under eye area. I like to take it right underneath the eye and do that triangle that everybody and their mom does. And I also like to get it kind of in the nose area so just again to prevent any like weird creasing and usually to me it takes like two swatches and that's where i'm kind of comfortable with and this blends really really nicely also for anyone wondering this is shade 11 in porcelain i think it's like one of like the fairest shades um that they can do which, if I'm not spray tanning, this is pretty much my foundation color, so. Whoops. And then I also just kind of like take it up the side of the nose and bring it down. And I don't really go past here. I just kind of like build that triangle like straight in this area right here. So now I'll go ahead and blend that out. But for this, I actually like to use a different beauty blender. I actually really like this shape. I showed you all these in my Target haul. They're by Sonia's something i don't know they were in my target haul video so if you're interested that's where i got them from they work really well along the nose and kind of in this eye area and i just lightly tap but also kind of like pressing that again into the skin filling in any kinds of pores getting rid of any creases because i don't want to end up setting them and sometimes i like a really white like bright under eye so sometimes i'll go back and add a little bit more but the other thing is if you're watching this video because you're going to do your interview so your flight is in an interview the thing I will say about that is I personally think it's nice to wear some makeup. I'm not saying you need to wear every single bit of makeup that you own, but if you are going to be doing makeup, especially like a full face everything like I generally do, you need to make sure it looks as natural and as flawless as possible. So definitely try not to go overboard. Okay, so now here's the part where I don't really want um, my under eyes to be creasing and if I wasn't talking to a camera as I was doing this it would already be set so the setting powder that I found that I really like with Dermacol is the Cody Airspun so you can get this at like CVS or Walgreens or one of those but I know it's also on Amazon I believe I did get this on Amazon and this is the translucent extra coverage so I really really like this one but basically if you're going to be using it you need to put a towel down because it goes everywhere I think it sets beautifully i think it really 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 minimizes your pores but it makes a mess and if you have never used cody airspun it's really really affordable i think it's like only six or seven dollars but the thing with it is it smells like your grandma's perfume it's not good it's a strong floral knock you on your butt kind of set i mean i feel like at this point a lot of people have used cody airspun before so you really know what i'm talking about but it stinks so there's that, but also it makes a mess. So just be careful. Like my husband does not let me do my makeup because we have like one of those full length mirrors. He does not let me do my makeup on the floor without sitting on a towel. But anyways, so I just kind of coat it like this. I just make sure I don't have any creasing, which I can already see because I didn't set this. I'm telling y'all, I set my under eyes right away if I can. I just kind of go in with my finger and kind of try and smooth any of those creases out because when you put powder down, it's just going to set and accentuate whatever creases you already have going on. Okay, so now go ahead and taking the beauty blender, I'm gonna go in and start up there because that is where I seem to crease a bunch and then kind of go out and I also do press this into the skin as well. Now, I know a lot of people love to bake. I don't notice too much of a difference. Sometimes I like to bake under here, but with my under eye area, I really don't notice a huge difference from when I bake to when I don't bake, and that's just personal preference. I really like to just kind of go in 
and set that and I feel like my pores look so minimized. So kind of where I'm at. Now I go back to the under eye area on the other side and again, just make sure nothing is really creased up and then go back in with some of that powder and really try and set that triangle that I did. I do like to take a little bit Going into the nose area right here. Just really make sure that you brush any excess off. You don't wanna look crazy. And also, I like to go into my smile lines before they start creasing out because I smile a lot. Why are you smiling like that? I just like to smile, smiling's my favorite. Make work your favorite, that's your favorite. And my lines get really, really creased. So I do also kinda of like to go in there and really set that before it gets super bad. I think this combination is so pretty. It lasts forever and with that body stuff in there, it doesn't look super drying. Okay, so now this part right here in that T-zone area is really set, so I'm gonna go ahead and go back in with the concealer and do my chin and my forehead. We'll just go ahead and take this right here and we're going to do the chin area. And then I just kinda go in here and do that and so many of you have commented on my crooked nose and think that it is because my contouring but i do want to say i have a deviated septum with a large crook in my nose so i really don't do a whole lot of nose contouring i do sometimes but not really so that's probably one of the reasons i don't take the concealer down is because i've noticed that when i do contour my nose especially like oh, quite a bit, it just accentuates it. I've heard if you get the line really, really straight, then it helps mask that kind of stuff. But I've never had any luck with any of that. So to all of you asking what's wrong with my nose, there you go. <laughs> so once we're here, we're gonna go back in with that Cody Airspun and set the chin area and I like to set the forehead. And then I do like to take like the tip of this, just take a little bit and I will kind of go down the nose just to set any of that. Sometimes I'll go in with like a tanner color and really contour up the nose and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just let the foundation that's in between the concealer do all of the contouring for me. And now is when I like to actually go in with my contour palette right here. So this is the Hi-Fi 8H palette. I will say that I wanted the lighter palette of these because I do feel like a lot of these colors I will never use because they are too dark for my skin tone, but they were all out of the lighter palette, so I just went ahead and went with this. But you can definitely tell which colors I'm using because I hit pan. This was one of the brushes from my Target haul as well. This is the e.l.f. Ultimate Blending Brush. So I'm gonna go into that first shade. Now for contouring, for me, I like everything to be up and lifted. So instead of actually starting my contour right here, which I know a lot of people do, I actually kind of start it up by where, almost where my highlighter would go. If you can see right here, I'm gonna be going like right in here. So, and I just go really lightly at first and then just kind of circle, trying to get some of those flyaways away. So just really light and then kind of circle but I like to go higher than I think a lot of people feel comfortable going because I really want that snatched look on the face. Okay, hopefully the lights don't affect this too much and y'all can see kind of like the difference between the two. my first time using these studio lights. So we're gonna have to see how they do when I'm editing this. And I really, I know some people will take their contour all the way down here and I don't, I kinda just hang it back right in here. And that's it. Now, if I'm super tan, sometimes I do like to go into this one and add an ever so slightly little bit more, but ever so slightly because it's it's definitely a darker shade for my skin range. We're gonna go ahead and contour up the forehead and for this I just kinda pat in there and then circle it, so. I just slightly do the jawline. I don't actually come up here into it. I literally will stick the brush kind of like underneath right here and go around. Kind of create that shadow and get rid of any second chin. And then I just drag it a bit down the neck. 
But I know some people like to actually come in there and do that and I don't. I take it literally underneath. And make sure that's nice and blended and just carry any extra bit down. Okay, so now that we are at this point, I will go back to the Cody Airspun powder. And here's like the only bit of baking that I will sometimes do is I will go back into it with my original beauty blender and use this side of it and just do like a light coat and make sure it's kind of all coated evenly. And then I will take it and start over by the ear and Drag that down. And then kind of just fill in any gaps. And that'll just kind of really sharpen my contour line. And then go ahead and do the other side. And that's it. It's not really a long bake. It's kind of, I apply it, I let it sit, and then we're brushing it off. And I like to take this big fluffy brush. This is Elf's Complexion Brush. I don't have any product on this, just whatever's left over from before. And I just kind of lightly go through and just kind of buff it and blend and just make sure everything's nice and seamlessly blended through. Okay, so now I like to go in halfway through and hit it with a setting powder. So the setting powder I currently am using is the Milani Make It Dewy. I love to be like dewy and kind of like that, that wet look, um, more so in the spring. Look young, look fresh. And then I will let this sit for just a minute and kind of dry it out. And then as it's drying, but not quite dry yet, I go in with a small tapered e.l.f. brush and I will go in with the highlight that I have barely any left. <laughs> and I'm gonna start here and then go kind of up the side. Here we go. Do the other side of that cheekbone and then go up and just add some, some glow over there. Oh, we are shining. We love that. Now I will take the slightest bit and hit the chin just a little bit, a little bit under the forehead, kind of where that concealer was, but I have a harsh line that runs through here. So I definitely don't take it up to the harsh line. I'll just kind of hit it right here and here, one right here. This is by Real Techniques. I don't even know what brush this is anymore, but it's just a teeny little brush and just take a little bit and kind of put it at the tip and that's it. There we go. So now I actually do my brows. Now I know a lot of you are gonna go do your brows first and that is fine, but I actually do have a brow. I don't have to do a lot to my brows. So to me, I just fill them in. Sometimes I will take a pencil and do that. Sometimes I will take an eyeshadow and do that. How am I feeling today? I think I'm gonna just do an eyeshadow. So to do it with an eyeshadow, I'm going to go into my Morphe 35W palette. This is the one that I travel with a lot that y'all might have seen in my how to pack video. And I will take my angled brush right here. This is also by Real Techniques. It's their brow brush. And I'm going to go into this color right here. But I just do like a light, kind of dusting and that is it. And then I'm gonna start right in the middle towards the end and then come back and hit the front. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the arch first and I'm just filling in any patchy or blank spots because I really like the shape of my brow. I really like how natural it is. So I'm just really filling it in and that's it. Okay, so then once I'm right here and I'm at the beginning part, I'm going to fill that in as well because it does have foundation on it so it kind of looks a little funny but I'm going to do it ever so slightly. Usually I will not even dip back in. I'm just gonna use kind of whatever's left and brush upwards to keep the shape but also just add a little bit of color back into the brow. But I don't wanna completely fill that in because I like when brows still look like real brows. So now I'm gonna go in and do the other one. Okay, so now that that's done, I am gonna go ahead and highlight under the brow right now to kind of sharpen it out. Just like a small flat brush. These don't even have a name. I got this whole set on Amazon and Juy. Oh, any products that I'm using that are actually on Amazon or somewhere that you can find them, I'll try and link them all down below just so you'll have a way to find them. But I'm actually gonna go back into the highlighting palette and then the palette that I used to highlight my cheekbones is what I'm going to ever so slightly highlight underneath. So just taking that. And I start again in the middle of the brow and then kind of work in and work out and just give it a nice little highlight. Okay. 
Okay, so the next thing I'm going to be doing is actually just doing a neutral color. This is kind of my everyday flight attendant look, but also if you're in an interview, keep it really neutral, keep it really simple. So this is what I do on a day to day. But also if you are in an interview, say go ahead and do this as well. So I'm going back in with the same palette and I'm going to come over to the lightest color right here and just take that all over except for the highlight region. So I just kind of really lightly. And that just gives me like a really good base to work with. I'm gonna come over and do the other one. Okay, now I'm going to take my brush like this. This was also in that same Amazon brush set. And I'm gonna go to the second lightest shade right next to that, the one that I've hit pan in as well. So we're gonna come over to that little peachy shade and go up right here where it would transition and just lightly kind of apply that. And then I'll go do the other eye. All right, now I'm gonna take a little bit of a smaller brush and go in with just one more darker color. I think I'm gonna go ahead and come in with this one right here, and I'm gonna go back into that transition, just not all over, just kind of in that crease right there, and kind of darken that up a little bit right there. And just make sure everything is really blended. That's good, that's pretty much it. I usually keep it really, really simple when I'm working, especially if you're in your interview. So I'm not gonna do some big cut crease or any kind of colors or any kind of smoky underneath the eye, especially for somebody like me who gets a lot of creasing under there. A lot of times when I add color under there, as beautiful as it is to start off with, it just looks terrible by the end of the day. So next I'm gonna go ahead and go in with an eyeliner. So for eyeliner, I'm gonna go ahead and go in with the Wet n Wild Felt Tip Eyeliner. I did show you this as well in that Target haul video, but before, I do this really fast. I do like to go ahead and start moisturizing my lips a bit right now. Sometimes I'll go ahead and take like the concealer and the foundation that's sitting on my lips off, but nah, it's just not the mood today. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little bit of the Vaseline Lip Therapy. I also showed you this in that Target haul as well, although I did get this from CVS or Walgreens. So I just take my finger and just put a little bit down because I hate when I'm wearing lipsticks or something and then my lips really start cracking, which does happen to me a lot because I'm so dry on the plane. So anyways, I like to go ahead and apply some moisturizer right now. That way my lips can kind of soak that in a bit as I'm gonna go ahead and do my eyeliner. Now the thing with eyeliner that I will say is if you are going to your interview cool it with a cat eye and I, oh. I know we all love a good cat eye and I'm gonna do one right now but really really try and tone that down when you are in your interview I would go with something just a really simple outline and kind of keep your own natural eye shape I'm telling you simple and professional looking will always be the way to go into your interview and it's funny because I tend to like things like larger eyelashes and kind of like that full glam look but even when I did my interview I had to tone it down so just understand that if you really want the job you're gonna do what it takes to get the job. So really try and tone some of the stuff down. If you do like the bright colors, chill. If you do like the crazy cat wing and the big lashes like I do, chill, okay? But for this, I am gonna go in with a small cat eye. So I actually like to start over here in the inner corner and then just small sections, take it across. Now, once I'm about here, I'm actually gonna build the wing and then connect it. So I start right where the end of the lash was and ever so slightly take that up to there and then not quite at the top. I'm gonna go a little bit lower than where the top is and drag that back down. And then I just fill in any patchiness. Okay, so there we go. Now, I know a lot of people say with their eyebrows, they're, they're sisters, not twins. It's gonna be the same with my eyeliner. So <laughs> they're gonna be sisters, probably not twins. Also, my battery's about to die. So let me go ahead and change that out for you guys. Okay, so I got a new battery and I went ahead and did this eye off camera, which like I said, they're sisters, not twins. It just is how it is. The next thing that I do is I do go ahead and apply some mascara. So I use the Falsies by Maybelline. I don't care necessarily what the mascara does, to be honest. So I'm not really picky about the mascara. I do like this one because for the under lashes, it doesn't get like all that black underneath my eye, which I really appreciate. So that is why I have this one. But right now I'm just going to do the top lashes 
put some fake lashes on and then I will be right back. So I just did my lashes off camera. So at this point I do have my top lashes with the mascara on, but now I'm going to go ahead and do the bottom lashes. The reason I don't do the mascara all together is because I noticed that when I'm trying to apply the false lashes, if this is any bit wet, it does get on my lower lash line. And then after you try and get that off, it's so tough to get the mascara off and then you just look tired because it's kind of all smeared and gray. But anyhow, I'm sure you can all relate. I'm hoping you can all relate. So go ahead and do the lower lashes now. Just do one light layer to kind of make sure that my lashes and my false lashes are gripped together and not separating out so they all blend nicely. If y'all haven't noticed by a lot of my videos, I generally wear a nude lip to work most of the time. Recently, I have been wearing the Wet n Wild Liquid Catsuit Matte Lipstick, and this is in the shade Nudist Peach. This was also my Target haul for any of you wondering. And most of the time I do wear that, but because this is a flight attendant video, and I do wanna keep it kind of part flight attendant like what I would do on my day to day, but also part flight attendant as what I would do in an interview is I. I would always rock that red lip in my interview. Now, I'm not saying everybody you need to go out there and wear your red lip. I'm not saying that whatsoever, but if you do feel comfortable and you feel really confident in a red lip, rock it. So in order to kind of meet in the middle of what I do on my day to day, but also kind of what I would do in an interview, that's what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna rock a red lip. So it's been a minute. It's been a minute since I've had a red lip. So let's go ahead and come over here and see which red lip we're gonna do. Now, I don't think I have this one on me because I think I just used the last of it a few weeks maybe months ago, I don't really know because it's been a minute since I've rocked a red lip. But usually I would use NYX Liquid Suede in their bright red. I do see here, I have NYX and Pure Red in their lipstick. All right, I think we're just gonna end up with this one. But I will say I would not generally use this. I would use their Liquid Suede. It lasts me all day. One, maybe two times I have to apply it and that's really it. So hopefully this works out. I feel like it's gonna smear a little bit, but that's fine. It's just an Odan, so I'll be on duty for like two and a half hours and wipe it right off my face. So we're going to go ahead and go in with Max Studio, just a liner. I don't think this part's really all that important what you're using. I'm going to try not to overline my lips, and I would suggest the same in your interview. Just keep it simple. Keep your natural lip line if you can. I've also never used this, so it's probably my least favorite part about makeup is lips. This is horrible. <laughs> this is really bad. You remember when I said it doesn't matter what kind of lip liner you use? I lied. I lied a lot. This is terrible. I can't even color in my lip. Okay, so we're done with this. It's really bad, but whatever. I have a feeling this lipstick's not gonna be great either. This is also what happens when you travel with your makeup. That's not gonna focus. But anyways, that's what happens when you travel with your makeup. Okay, the red lip is on. Now let me be honest with y'all because I can already tell kind of like by the creaminess of this red lip, I would not wear this on a day to day. I can just tell this is gonna like wipe off. I'm going to go and finish doing my hair and put on my uniform and I will come back and show you the final look. <laughs> okay, you guys, so right after this, I just kind of hit it. One more setting spray, that's it. This is my my flight attendant look. I think it's great for interviews. I think it's great if you're just on the job and you're about to fly. Again, I would stay away from the winged liner if you are in the interview. And also I would go with a different shade of red, preferably one that is going to stay all day and be really long wear. But other than that, this is my makeup look. I hope you all enjoyed it and I hope this is exactly what you wanted. So thank you so much for watching and have a great one, y'all. Bye. Awesome.